So, my name is Thiago, and my project is about the excessive use of antibiotics and the problems this can cause to our health. In this presentation, I will talk about two problems, which is antibiotics resistance and the rise of superbacteria, and also the problems that this abusive use can cause to our health and our bodies. So, to start, let me ask you a question. How many times have you taken antibiotics in your life? Well, we know that these drugs are very common and popular because they are able to cure most of the bacterial infections we have today. And here is a map that shows that in the last years, these drugs have become more popular in developed countries as a treatment trend to this kind of infections. So, the first topic that I would talk about is what are superbacteria and how are they related with antibiotics resistance. So basically, superbacteria are strains of bacteria that have uh, developed resistance to these drugs, so we are not able to kill them by using uh, regular medicines. And what is the relation between antibiotics and these kind of uh, microorganisms? So what happens is that uh, you have, for example, a colony here, and for a because of a mutation that happens randomly, this bacterium here became resistant to antibiotics effect without having contact with that drug. What means that this was a good, muta a good, muta a good mutation for it. And let's suppose the other steps didn't happen, that the situation stayed like this. Uh, the resistant bacterium wouldn't be able to grow in size and in number because it would be competing to find and to eat with the other bacteriums so their population wouldn't grow. But as we put antibiotics in the colony, the normal bacteria die, and the resistant bacteria one is now an advantage, so it, it can get all the nutrients to, to itself, and then it starts to grow. And in the end of the process, we have a colony of resistant bacteria as big as the first one, but that it's now more harmful than before. So antibiotics, they didn't like induce the mutations, but they induce natural selection, which is something that we learn on school and we think is like too far away from our reality because it takes millions of years to happen. But if we uh, work with organisms like this that have a short lifetime and a uh, fast reproduction system, we can see its effects. And from one single individual, in last in two hours, it can, the population can grow from one to sixty-five, and in the next other two hours, it can grow from sixty-five to four thousand because it grows in an exponential uh, speed. And uh, the ways uh, these microorganisms get antibiotic resistance is, of course, mutation. But some things that can uh, help this mutation to happen is overprescribing of antibiotics because. For example, if we expose uh, many colonies of bacteria to antibiotics, we have a higher chance to end uh, selecting a strong one. And also, the lack of new antibiotics is something that is uh, strongly related to this uh, resistance, because if we always try, for example, let's make an analogy. You have one weapon to fight one enemy. If this enemy is able to defend itself from your weapon, you will lose the fight. So if you have more weapons, different types of weapons, you have a higher chance to win. And this is what antibiotics can do. Another problem is that if one strain of bacteria gets resistant, it can pass this resistant gene to another one that it's not. So by this process, uh, bacteria uh, that are different types of bacteria that get resistant, and nowadays uh, we have 25 strains they are very hard to kill. The 10 most dangerous ones are these, and some of them are related to very common kinds of infections, infections like gonorrhea and tuberculosis. Escherichia coli is related to urinary infections in women, and for, uh, it's like very frightening when you read that you need to combine 20 different types of antibiotics, strong drugs, to kill these guys. So they are getting like even more resistant and we have to, to do something to stop them. And of course, if you, for example, are infected with one of these and you have to take 20 different types of antibiotics into your body, that will not be good to you, yeah? Because it's like lots of drugs. 
So we, we are now in the second part of the presentation, which is the bad effects that the antibiotics have in our bodies. Um, basically, th there are some researches that show that antibiotics are very uh, close related with obesity, overweight, and autoimmune diseases such as cancer and lupus. Uh, here is what we showed before, that it can help bacteria to get resistant and, and have chronic infections. Uh, but here is the most important part, in a close time consequence. Uh, for example, when we take antibiotics oftenly, our immune system goes down because this drug is made to kill bacteria. So it kills the bacteria that are attacking your body, but also the ones that are inside our guts. And then, our immune system goes down. These uh, good bacteria that live in our guts are called probiotics, and they have four main mechanisms of fighting these pathological agents. Uh, the first one is competing for nutrients, because if they get it, the other one will starve to death. Uh, competition for adhesion sites, which means if they are not bounded with our gut uh, tissue, they will be naturally expelled with our gut flow, and then they are away of our body. Direct antagonism, because they like fight one with another, and if we have like a higher number of probiotics in our guts, we will be able to win. But the most important one is immune stimulation because it helps our body to create immune cells that will not protect us only against these bacteria but also against viruses and any kind of pathological agent. So it's very important after you take like a week of antibiotics to take uh, probiotic supplements. And how to solve this problem of excessive use of antibiotics? So we have uh, three main things we can do which is uh, invest in researches for new kinds of, drug, of drugs, so we have more weapons to fight against these bacteria. Uh, try to use different treatment trend, trends, such as vaccines, or just have like healthier habits to not get sick so often. But the main one is raise public awareness, because as soon as people have more knowledge about what is going on, they are able to prevent themselves themselves and tell others what to do to try to fight against this problem, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, and if we don't do nothing to fight this, the predictions are that in 2050, a few years from now, antimicrobial resistant infections will kill more than cancer. And it's something like almost unbelievable for today that uh, since the invention of, since the invention, since the discovery of penicillin by Fleming, uh, humans' life expectation has grown for 40 years up to 80. And if this happens, we will go back to a time where we had no defenses against these uh, agents. And so we must do something now. I know that there are things that are beyond our control, like we can't develop, we ordinary people, can develop a new drug to fight this bacteria. But we can do our part by raising public awareness as the uh, World Health Organization is trying to do, so we can do our part to change the situation. Uh, we must start to take actions now and today, because if we don't, maybe tomorrow it will be too late to turn the tide, and we will be uh, simply defenseless against these organisms. To finish, as Darwin said, the fittest will survive, and so I will leave the question, who are the fittest? We humans or bacteria? Thank <laughs> you.